broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our webinar on Introduction to Salesforce DX. I'm on the line here with our esteemed evangelist, Annie He, who will share this exciting information with you today. Um, her email address is listed here, and if you have any questions for her after the webinar, you can find her on Twitter at Annie He. He. All right, well, we want to make sure that we get to your questions. Um, we know that you probably have a lot of them. So we're going to start looking at your questions now. So please make sure to add that to the question, the question section of your GoToWebinar. Also, stick around for Q&A so that we can go through them all together at the end. And if we didn't get to your question, head to the Trailblazer community at trailblazer.salesforce.com slash answers. Um, we also will have a survey at the end of the webinar. So please make sure to stick around and take the survey so that we can make our webinar even better for you. And you may have seen this slide before and just sharing with you once again, that please make all purchasing decisions based on products that are already generally available. And with that, Want to make sure that you also stay social with us. So here are all of our handles, Salesforce devs um, on Twitter. And also just a reminder that this webinar is being recorded. And so it'll be posted to YouTube after today. So if you want to scrub and go back to a certain question or a part of Annie's presentation, you'll be able to do that by going to our YouTube channel, uh, which is listed here and searching for introduction to Salesforce DX. And that'll be posted by tomorrow. Next slide. And with that, I'll send it over to Annie. Thanks, Annie. Thanks, Nisha. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, for attending this introduction to DX webinar. DX stands for Developer Experience, and it's a suite of tools and environments that Salesforce, Salesforce provides for you to develop and deploy apps faster. Now, before we get to Salesforce DX, let's talk about how Salesforce changed app development. So how did Salesforce change app development? Well, every app that you use runs on lots of operations and infrastructure. However, provisioning resources and guaranteeing application availability are hard, hard problems. So people tend to spend a lot of time maintaining infrastructure and operations. However, if you build on the Salesforce platform, it means your teams don't need to spend time building and maintaining the infrastructure to support your apps. Instead, you can focus on developing apps to deliver value to your customers. Now, Salesforce DX developer experience takes it one step further by providing the tools and environments to help you build and deliver apps faster, yes, and also the way you want. Now, before we talk about Salesforce DX in detail, let's, talk, let's take a step back and see how you can build and deliver faster with the Lightning platform. So what is the Lightning Platform? Well, the Lightning Platform is provided by Salesforce to enable you to create custom applications and experiences. What does the Lightning Platform provide? Well, out of the box, it provides components. These are UI components similar to widgets. You can get them out of the box or from App Exchange, which is Salesforce's version of the App Store. You can also create your own uh, components using Lightning Web Components, which is the latest programming model. Then there is also, Salesforce also provides metadata. This means the configuration for your apps is stored. This is great because if you want to con uh, version control your apps, you can also version control the metadata. I will show you an example of a metadata file in a demo shortly. Now you may be wondering how does Salesforce DX fit into the Lightning Platform? Well, DX provides the tools, the builders, environments, and ways to manage your releases to enable your team to build and deliver faster. Now, specifically what we're going to cover today, uh, what I'm going to talk about today is three points on how you can build apps faster with Salesforce DX. First of all, how DX accelerates developer productivity, how it already works with the tools you know and prefer, and how it works with any org, meaning how you can choose the environments and deployment methods that make sense for your teams. Okay, let's talk about the first point, how Salesforce DX accelerates developer productivity. 
By developer productivity, we mean the IDEs, the plugins, and the CLI. CLI meaning command line interface. So Visual Studio Code is the official uh, IDE for Salesforce developers. It comes with a Salesforce plugin, meaning you can install the Salesforce plugin, which provides powerful language services, including IntelliSense and hinting for metadata, as well as the ability to create Lightning web components and Apex classes from the command palette, meaning you don't actually have to type in SFDX commands every time. Now, if you're using an IDE that is not Visual Studio Code or does not have a Salesforce plugin, you can use the Salesforce CLI out of the box. So CLI, again, is command line interface and you can type in the commands or you can save the commands to a script and run them from your IDE. Lastly, code quality and reliability is very important. So using your IDE, you can run Lint and PMD as well as tests locally, such as just tests, which are great for testing Lightning web components. Now let's talk about how Salesforce DX already works with your favorite tools. So as a Salesforce developer, you're using the right tools for the right job. One day that could be uh, meaning using the UI based tools such as App Builder, Schema Builder, Process Builder. These are all part of the Salesforce DX. Then another day you may be working in Visual Studio Code, you may be using the Salesforce CLI. These are also part of Salesforce DX. And when you're testing, Salesforce DX provides options on how you test. For example, the Apex tests, you can run them from the browser in your source org, you can run them through the Salesforce CLI, or you can run them from your IDE. The deployment methods also are very flexible. You can choose which one you want to use. You can deploy through APIs, deploy through UI-based change sets, or through different packaging technologies. So overall, Salesforce DX gives you the flexibility to choose the right tools for the right task. And you can connect these tools to your source control and continuous integration system of choice. Now, how does Salesforce DX work with any org? Well, DX aims to make development better for everyone for any kind of org. So whether you're using DX to deliver apps for a single highly specialized org or complex group of orgs, your team can use a standard set of tools, shared industry practices, and best practices to deliver apps to production. Now, enough talk, let's look at a demo. So in the demo, I'm going to use Visual Studio Code, the official IDE for Salesforce developers, and the Salesforce plugin to deploy some changes from the local environment. And then in my developer edition, I'm gonna make some changes and retrieve those changes to our local using the Salesforce CLI. Let's take a look at how that works. Okay, uh, before I go there, I wanna say that the code that I'm about to show you is open source and is part of the sample gallery. Now sample gallery is a collection of six apps created by Salesforce developer evangelists to highlight the best practices for app development. Now, specifically, we are going to take a look at the DreamHouse app here. Uh, the code is available and it's open source. And if you click there, you'll see that we go to a GitHub repo and it's open source. So you can have, you can access the code here. It has a very comprehensive readme on how to deploy this app to your org. All right, so I already set this up in my developer edition. So I'm gonna take you to a tour of the app. So this is DreamHouse and you can see it is a real estate application. It's designed so that as a real estate agent, you can filter for properties to see which is the most suitable for your buyer. So for example, um, I can filter by price and you can see, oh, there's no properties under $400,000. Let's see, okay, under that price, there are a few properties available. So these are built using Lightning Web co Components, very, very cool. Now, let's pretend we're developers for DreamHouse, and we just got a request saying, okay, well, the bedrooms, the default number of bedrooms for the slider right now is zero. Uh, so that's not very helpful. Ideally, the default in the slider would be two. So let's take a look at that, at how we can change that in our code. How, how we can change the minimum default number of bedrooms from zero to two. How we can have the slider default to be a two instead of zero. 
Okay, we're gonna make the change locally and we're gonna go over to our Visual Studio code. So this is our IDE. You can see that uh, I have the code already here, a copy of the code on my local. Again, the code is open source, so you can take a look at the sample apps. Uh, so we are going to go to the command palette in Visual Studio Code to find the file that we need to make the change. So I'm going to bring up the command palette, and you can see the command palette is this uh, text box thing, and it has it, it provides a centralized way to get to your files and to run commands. So right now, by default, it has a caret, which means it's expecting a command, and you can see there's already some SFDX commands populated there courtesy of Salesforce plugin. Now, we are going to find the file. So I know the file we're looking for is called property filter. So we can see that it filtered uh, by that file name to find the file for us. Okay, so now we're gonna click on this file and we're going to go to the file. All right, so hopefully you can see that the syntax highlighting, it shows we are looking at a JavaScript file of a Lightning Web component, which is one of the ways to create UI components on Salesforce. So the property that we're looking to change is on line 13, it says min bedrooms equals zero, which makes sense because in the UI right now it shows zero. So we need to change it to two as per our requirements. I'm gonna save it. Okay, so we made the change locally. Now all we need to do is deploy this change to our org. How we're gonna do that is we're gonna click on the files icon, uh, the files explorer. So I'm gonna click on there and that opens up where the file is relative to other files. The good thing with this is I can right click on the file and it shows me a context menu. And you can see on the context menu from the right click, there's three SFDX options. So these are populated thanks to the Salesforce plugin. Now we are going to pick the middle one, SFDX deploy source to org. Because we made the change locally, we're deploying it to our org. Now we are going to click this and what we expect to see is a Salesforce CLI running, and that is exactly what we have here, running SFDX deploy source to org, and you can see it was successful. You can even see which, uh, which files were deployed. So it's the, the Lightning components that we just changed. Awesome, so now we're gonna go back to our org to see the changes, where you need to refresh the page. And we expect to see that the default number of bedrooms is actually two. Now this is very useful because now the real estate agents, they don't have to change it from zero to two and so on. So this is great. We just saw an example of how we made a local change and we deployed it to our Salesforce org. Now let's try something the other way around. We're gonna make a change in our org and we are going to retrieve those changes in our local. Let's see how that works. So let's pretend that we're developers and we got another request saying, okay, well, right now what we have is when we click on the property, say we click the run on Cambridge, we have the details uh, components here, which, pop, which is populated, which is nice. Uh, but the most important thing in real estate is, you know, location, location, location. And we want to see where this property is on a map. Uh, so let's do that. We already have a map component available. Let's add it to the page. How we're gonna do that is we're gonna click on setup, which is a gear icon. Uh, click on that, and we are gonna click on the last option, which is edit page. So when we click on edit page, it takes us to the Lightning App Builder, right over here. The Lightning App Builder is great because it All right, so we're looking for the map component 
and we have a custom component here. We're going to drag and drop. And there it is. Awesome. So we added the map components. We need to save the components. So now it's part of the page. And then we can go back. And yes, we see that the property component has been added to the page. This is awesome. Now to test how it works is we click on, for example, this property. And we can see that the map component automatically shows. It takes the detail uh, of the property, 48 Brattle Street. It actually shows where it is. And this is quite a value add because now the real estate agents can zoom in and zoom out and see what is nearby. So, OK. That was a very fast change in our org. Now the thing is, our local environment does not reflect that yet. So let's, let's go back to our local environment and retrieve the changes. Okay, so we are going back to our IDE. We are going to look for the metadata file of that page. Okay, we're gonna bring up the command palette again. And we're going to remove the carrot to look for a file. We know that the uh, property is a property explorer Fluxy page. So this is the file we're looking for. The Fluxy page is the metadata type for the lightning page that we just changed. And we can see that this, uh, this XML file, this metadata file, is out of date because the right region you can see Fluxy page regions. So this block over here, starting line 17, is the right region, and it only has the property summary components. It should have two components because we just added the property map component. Now, how do we update this, this metadata file? Well, we can go back to the Explorer. We are going to bring up the context menu again by right click. And we, on the context menu, we have three options, right? We have, we're not gonna click deploy now because we are going to actually retrieve the source, right? Because the change was made in the org and we need to retrieve it from the org, okay? We're just gonna click on SFDX, retrieve source from org. And you can see that is running and you can even see the command that was run, SFDX for source retrieve, source path and so on. So this was successful. So when we go back to the Fluxy page, the Property Explorer Fluxy page, we expect to see, yes, there's two components now. The property map component has been added to the right region part of the metadata file. Okay, this is wonderful because now we can, we can retrieve uh, from the org and store this in our version control system. Awesome, so that is the demo. It was a very fast high level overview of how SFDX works. Now let's go back to the slides. Awesome, so now you're thinking, okay, that was a good demo. I want to get hands on with Salesforce DX. How do I get started today? Well, we recommend that you make Trailhead your next step. Trailhead is a fun way to learn. We have get started with Salesforce DX link right over here, this first link, sforce.co. So if you head over to that link, you'll see there is a trailhead trail, which is a list of projects. They're all Salesforce DX centered. So it's a great way to get started with Salesforce DX. Another example we want to show you is the sample gallery. This is the one that well, we already showed you. And the good thing is those six apps, they are open source, they are SFDX based. So if you head over to the sample gallery and you click on the apps are interested, you can see the detailed readme on how to deploy those apps to your org using the Salesforce CLI. Awesome, so thank you. That was it for the presentation. If you, uh, if you have any questions, please uh, join the conversation at Salesforce Devs. If you like this webinar, please give us a shout out there. Otherwise, please head over to Trailhead and yes. All right, so now moving to the Q&A portion. Um, Annie, we have some questions for you. Um, the first question is, is it possible to debug Apex code like uh, Apex code runtime like C-sharp solution in VS? 
So the uh, I'm not aware of the C sharp uh, runtime. However, the Visual Studio Code does have an Apex debugger, Apex replay debugger, and I would actually go to the I would actually either Google Apex replay debugger or go to Trailhead. There is actually a module, a hands-on module with Apex replay debugger. The good thing with Apex replay debugger is once you have the logs, you can replay your Apex file numerous times, and this won't actually uh, uh, actually run anything in your org. So this is a re really good way to test your Apex without running it in the org. Super, thanks for that. Um, how do you connect your VS Code to your org? So that is, uh, there's um, the best, <laughs> I would recommend actually going to a get started with DX and go to the, through the quick start. There is uh, one, Yes, use Visual Studio Code for Salesforce development. So with SFDX, you can actually set, uh, I can go to my, and I can list all the config variables and this will show me what I have. Uh, this is great for version, uh, for just user management. So you can, when you, when you authenticate, there's a web flow, which if you go through the trailhead modules, you can authenticate and to connect your SFDX to multiple orgs. And once you have once you have that, you can set aliases and set default orgs. So right now I have this uh, user, I have Dreamhouse uh, demo org set as the default. And the good thing is you can actually open source orgs from here without using uh, using passwords and stuff, but that's after you go through the through the authentication flow, and that is covered in the Trailhead module. Cool. Um, what is the option to bring up the command palette? So that is um, depends on your operating system and um, how your keys are configured. So on my Mac, I have it on the default, which is Command Shift P. Uh, on Windows, it may be slightly different, and but basically. The, this is all covered as part of the the Trailhead project on setting up SFDX. Cool. Um, do you have to retrieve specific changes from the org each time, or can you refresh your local IDE to get the newest version? And the question: uh, Do you have to retrieve specific changes? from the org each time, or can you refresh your local IDE to get the newest version? So the, okay, there is no way to automatically do that. Also, if you want to put it in a script um, to retrieve the changes, you can, but uh, I don't, I don't think how, I'm, I'm not aware of a way to do that right now. Got it. Um, what are the benefits of Scratch Org in DX? So the joy of using a Scratch Org is if you have something that you want to test out. Uh, so there's there's more information on, on Scratch Orgs in this trail. The benefit of a Scratch Org is you can just test out a feature or a bug fix, and you can spin up uh, Scratch Orgs, and they're entirely disposable. There's also you can configure. Uh, so in the DX. Uh, in the oops, in SFDX project JSON, you can actually use uh, this to configure your scratch org so they can be spun up in a certain way. And yeah, they're meant to be a prototype short-term solutions. And once the, the once uh, your solution works in the scratch org, you can you can uh, version control them or push them to another org. So the good thing is they're you can configure them. They are temporary, and it's a good way to test out solutions without deploying to production. Question about cost. Are the tools free? Yes, the tools are, uh, are com complementary. So Visual Studio Code is, um, is from Microsoft. You can install it for free. The Salesforce plugin is free. The Salesforce CLI is also free. Yes, these are all free. I like free. Um, can I use other IDEs like IntelliJ? Yes, so IntelliJ, I believe there is something called Illuminated Cloud, which is a Salesforce plugin there. 
Uh, if your IDE is not IntelliJ or Visual Studio Code or it's, it's something else, you can always use the Salesforce CLI, which is free to install as well. Um, does it support in Windows environment? Yes, Visual Studio Code supports a Windows environment. Where can we get more information or details on how to actually set up this type of thing working in our production orgs? So the quick start, the Visual Studio Code for Salesforce development covers how you can set up Visual Studio Code and connect to a Salesforce org. So that would be a good first step. All right. And um, there's another question about um, how, uh, how they can get more information and learn more about uh, Salesforce DX. Um, I know that you recommended a Trailhead module. Are there other ways that they can learn about Salesforce DX? Yeah. So, there, so this is a getting started with Salesforce DX. The trail is a good part. If you have specific questions about what is covered or not covered on Salesforce DX, I recommend going to the metadata coverage. So this is publicly available. And if you're curious about what is supported or not supported, you can go through here. Um, there's also a Salesforce developer blog. If you search, uh, search for SFDX, I know Zane Turner um, has a very good get started with, I'm just gonna go through that right now, Salesforce. So if you search for Salesforce DX on Salesforce developers, there's a very good up-to-date content on that as well. Yeah, and you can access the blog, I think, if you just developer.salesforce.com slash blog. I think that's, yep. the, that's what you're looking for. Yeah, the blogs are very good. Yeah. And then, um, Annie, will you be at Trailhead DX this, um, this next month? Yes, I am. I will be. I will be there. Yes, uh, I will be part of the Robotics Ridge booth. So if you're there, come say hello. Cool. What is Robotics Ridge, and what are you doing there exactly? Yeah. So Robotics Ridge is a very exciting part of uh, Trailhead DX and Dreamforce. So it's going to be a big, uh, a big booth, and we're going to have robots. We're going to show how you can integrate robotics and IoT and Salesforce. And it's going to be this, uh, this year we're going to have a very cool um, sustainable theme and it will be a great demo, which it hasn't seen before. This is entirely new and we're excited to have you at Trailhead DX to see it. Great. Awesome. Um, we have a couple more questions um, and then I think that's all the time we've got for today. Uh, but is the metadata format on local computer different than before DX was available? The question again is, is the metadata format on local computer different than before DX was available? Not entirely. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how long that was before. So uh, yeah. Not entirely sure how, like, how, how long back are we talking about? Yeah, well, we'll, uh, we'll ask another question and, and see if um, we get a follow on to that. How do we check a scratch org code changes at runtime, local host or in a dev sandbox? How do we check the changes? Um, yeah, how do we check scratch org code changes at runtime through local host or in a dev sandbox? How do we check the changes? Uh, not entirely sure what the question is. So, like how we deploy the changes from Scratch Org to the uh, sandbox? I think, yeah, maybe, or if there is a change, how, um, how can you tell? Like what, what is it that you use when you're ch uh, checking your code changes, your Scratch Org, for your Scratch Org? Uh, so the code changes, you can retrieve them, um, and that the flow is slightly different from scratch works and non scratch works. Uh, yeah, I, I would like more clarification on that question. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah that's totally fair. Um, yeah, and again, if you want to ask Annie a question on Twitter, you can. Um, her Twitter handle is at Annie He He, so that's A N N Y H E H E on Twitter. Um, 
Again, thank you so much for joining um, our, our call today. And Annie, thanks for, for presenting and sharing this really exciting content with all the audience. We really hope to see you all again at a future webinar and intro series. We have um, a bunch coming up in the next couple of months before Trailhead DX. Uh, we also hope to see you at Trailhead DX. So again, thank you, Annie, and thank you everybody for joining the call. Thank you, Anisha. Have a good day, bye. Bye-bye.